Hey everyone, this is Steve from GamersNexus.net and I am joined once again by Kent Smith from LSI and today we're talking some more about the uh, about evolving flash types and a couple of other topics so you, you know you've all seen MLC and TLC NAND and things of that nature when selecting a solid state driver when reading reviews and uh, it's beyond the spec sheet on Newegg or wherever you look at, you're looking there's not a whole lot of technical depth so that's where we're going today um, and starting with the flash types, the NAND types, uh, MLC as an acronym means multi-level multi -level cell, TLC is triple level cell, uh, and that's sort of where a lot of it stops. So can I get you to tell us some more about how, uh, how that actually works, what it actually means? Sure, and uh, just uh, to, to clear everybody, we, we skipped over SLC, of course, right. which today you really only see in the high-end enterprise. Uh, SLC meaning single level cell, but what that's talking about is the uh, actual voltage levels that are kept uh, within a cell. So single level cell meaning there's really two voltage levels uh, effectively on and off. It's storing for one bit. When you go to MLC or two levels, you actually store four bits or four levels. So that means there's there's four voltage levels that are being stored in an individual cell and versus just two levels. Uh, so it's a lot harder to differentiate. So if this particular level here suddenly has uh, a reduced voltage, if something drops, it now looks like the second of those four levels. And so that's a bit error. And it's only because of the ECC that you'll be able to correct that. The problem is ECC has to cover a number of bits, uh, a, a number of cells all at once. And if too many of them are wrong, you've got an error. So TLC then uh, is two to the power of three or eight. Uh, I won't bother putting eight fingers up here, but it, it just gets that much harder in that same cell, in that same range, you're trying to put eight different voltage levels. So it's really tough. And that imp impacts performance pretty heavily. Um, so uh, is there anything we can do on the controller level to mitigate the impact? Yeah, in fact, one of the biggest drawbacks of that, of course, we were kind of talking about that error rate uh, because uh, those will, those bits will shift over time. So your controller is going to try to take care of that with higher powered error correction schemes uh, like we, we, uh, we announced the shield technology on the latest generation of Sandforce controllers. And so that'll be able to, to do a lot more uh, error correction for future NAND flash as, as it continues to evolve. Um, the, the speed uh, is also an issue as you mentioned. Uh, TLC is going to be a bit slower than MLC, um, and so you know the 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 pro of TLC is it's it's cheaper to make because you get more bits in the same silicon, but the drawback is it gets a little sore. So the controller has to do other things to mitigate that. Um, you look at uh, potentially having more die, so then you want a bigger drive. You know, and right. today you know the 240 uh, gig capacity is pretty typical. 256. You know, that's a pretty common sweet spot. And that, for the most part, is, is accessing as many die as you can to keep it going as quickly as possible. Now, what do we have? Uh, TLC just sort of got introduced to the consumer market not long ago. Right. What happens next? Is there a next step after TLC? The announcements that have uh, gone on from uh, the flash manufacturers are talking about uh, 3D NAND and VNAND. Uh, this is a category of, uh, of flash memory. If you think about SLC and MLC and TLC as single family homes, you know, in a city, and then uh, in order to take advantage of that same real estate, we want to build vertically, right? And so there's a, a, a couple of different processes that have been announced that essentially make it sort of like high rise apartments so you can get you know, 10 or 20 additional levels for that same footprint of silicon. And so it has the advantage of you can now increase that geometry. You can go to a higher process node. So that lowers your error rate. Um, it, it has uh, the disadvantage of a little bit higher cost, but you then divide that by having, you know, 10 or 20 or 30 different levels in the same footprint and you get to go past that cost curve. Today, you know, it's really not cost effective. Uh, a lot of manufacturing steps have to be worked through, but you know, MLC was not possible, you know, five, 10 years right. ago. So it'll happen, it'll come. 
for programming race cycles, can you give us an overview of, of what it actually means? Um, you know, okay. the, the basics are it's how many times you can write to the flash and erase it before it starts decaying heavily and eventually dies. Right, right. So how does that all work? Okay, so within flash memory, you can write to uh, individual pages at a time, but you have to erase whole blocks at a time. Each time you do that erase process, you effectively decay uh, the, the cells. Now, you, you could also argue it's the program step that does the decay, and that's probably more appropriate, but either way, you can't do a new program until you do an erase. So it doesn't matter which side you're counting, the count will incre uh, increment and you will have a, a decay in the cell. So what happens is as it decays, the cells have less ability to hold the charge. So at the beginning of life, you know, remember we were talking about on uh, MLC, you have those four levels. Uh, it's really easy to keep those charges uh, as you cycle it more and more those charges tend to start you know migrating and pretty soon charge three and four look like charge four and maybe charge one and two look like charge one and so it, then it's harder and harder to differentiate so again the ecc does the job of correcting that but if there's too many errors in a in a single area the ecc can't can't recover from it so that's where the the cycle count comes in if I, if I have a flash that has 3,000 cycles, that essentially means the flash is able to go through 3,000 different times in that cell uh, doing a program and a race cycle. And after you do the 3,000, the cell, according to the factory, says it can still hold those charges for whatever the spec is. If it's consumer class, it's typically about a year. So, so we actually uh, have cell decay. Exactly. Yeah. So you could potentially set your laptop computer on a shelf uh, and, uh, you know, just forget about it. You're using your desktop all year long. You finally go out for the next show and suddenly your laptop's empty right. because it's been a year since you've turned it on. So zap, sort of like your car battery. If you leave your car long enough, the battery will drain. It's that same idea. Okay. And uh, uh, another topic is preconditioning. So I've mentioned this when talking about our test methodology on the website. Uh, we, we do precondition the drive before each type of test. And uh, you guys kind of have the basics of it. Um, but at a, can you give us a top level look at preconditioning, why it's important, and then, um, and then maybe explore why our readers would see lower performance or higher performance given uh, different intervals of use? Sure. Uh, oftentimes when uh, you see a review or a discussion around uh, an SSD, you'll see that it has a certain spec. You know, it can write so many megabytes per second. A lot of times you'll see it's an up to number. And in many cases, that'll be a, uh, a fresh out of box number. And the problem with that is the drive will only live in that lifespan. Uh, within its lifespan, it'll only live in that time period for uh, less than 1% of its life, you know, maybe even 0.01% of its life. So it's not really helpful because as soon as you start writing data to it, it has to garbage collect. All SSDs have to garbage collect. Now, some will be faster than others at garbage collecting, but they all have to garbage collect. It's during that process that the performance will drop down because during garbage collection, if you're processing moving data, you can't take any new data in. And so it's that, uh, that, uh, um, that fight, that internal fight, right. if you will, over the bandwidth to the flash between the host and the controller trying to move data around that will actually slow the, the, the drive down. So when, uh, when you look at uh, benchmarks, you want to make sure you understand whoever did that analysis, you know, did they do the proper preconditioning? And there's various ways of doing it. Uh, there's many theories on it, but at a minimum, you have to do some kind of preconditioning. Now, we generally recommend if you really want to look at real world, you want to sequentially precondition uh, before you do a sequential test, and you want to randomly precondition before you do a random test. Now, if you believe your environment is a mix, that's fine. If your test can have a mix of sequential and random, then essentially you just need to run that test long enough to ensure garbage collection is operating with that particular configuration, and you will see the performance of what the real world would look like with that same condition. Right, and so for any of you who want to do testing on your own drive at home to make sure you're getting the, the specs that you've seen online, 
generally what we do when, when testing SSDs is use iometer and I can put all the links in the description below uh, and as gamers you'll want to do 4k random preconditioning and testing because you're going to be using mostly very small files uh, whereas sequential is more for the heavy users who are writing very large files frequently um, so I'll, I'll put some basic instructions on how to precondition your drive and, and do a real actual test that way you get a Actually, the, the best thing to do would be test it straight out of the box or secure erase it uh, and then do your your precondition test so you can see the real difference between... You can see that difference right. and really understand, yes, you have hit that uh, garbage collection period because you will see a drop, especially on random writing. Right. So all that again in the link in the description below. And uh, thanks again, Kent, and we will see you all next time. Thank you.